This is an imagined future. You know, it's a fantasy, if you like. Um, it, we have used, I mean, the, Mike Bartlett, who wrote the scripts, he um, used the public personas of these people. But obviously he hasn't met the royals and we haven't met the royals. So we can only give our best representations. And that's based on, we all did lots of research, and that's based on, you know, a lot of YouTube, wealth of YouTube clips and the internet. One of the things the film deals with is what happens when the queen dies. She has bridged, you know, the changing society for an unprecedented amount of time. And we live in a new world now. And the, the next generation, if you like, the generation below Charles, really are a lot more media savvy and understand the way this sort of modern 24-hour news cycle world works and they have to regenerate themselves accordingly. This is the drama of our film is how Charles is perhaps stuck in the, the fulcrum, stuck in the middle of this change and how he copes or doesn't cope. Um, I think it's extraordinary what they've done. I think, I think William and Kate and Harry have done an extraordinary job of humanising the royal family, which I think you could easily argue is what our society needs from our royal family at this point. My journey in this was to explore the royal family, and particularly William, and I've become quite a staunch monarchist since uh, investigating William. I'm a huge fan of his, and I hope if he sees my portrayal of his character, even within this story, um, I hope he sees it's done with a lot of admiration and respect. William. Where's Robert's gone? I said to take an hour off. You said? That's right, Your Majesty. Your Majesty? But William, it's me. Despite the horrid things you've done, it's me. So call me Dad. Or Father, if you like, but not Your Majesty, like all the rest. I call you that, for that is what you are. Before my father, long before all else, you are the King.